in order for a Jew to overcome all of the tests that he's going to get in different ways, he must have confidence in Hashem. He must have bitachon in Hashem to know that even though not all of the stories in our lives are as easily to, easy to explain as what I just explained to you. The benefit that we have is that we knew the beginning of the story, we knew the middle of the story, and now we know the end of the story. So it feels good. We have to apply this story to our life. How do we apply this story to our life on a day-to-day basis so the next time you want to do a mitzvah that's difficult for you, like for example, watching your eyes because there's a half-naked woman walking down the street and you want to be a good Jew and not look at her. How do you do it? Well, you should know that Rabbi Aaron Atta quotes from the Zohar, he says that every time there's an opportunity for you to see something immodest, an immodest woman. It's right in front of you. There's a woman walking down the street. Meaning that it's not right in front of you. She's walking down the street. Meaning you have an opportunity to go elsewhere. Or perhaps on a screen. You could turn it off. Or perhaps it's uh, somewhere within your vicinity. You know that this way, you can look at the billboard that has something that's not allowed. Something that's forbidden. You can look elsewhere. You can walk elsewhere. You could do something else. You have an opportunity to react. Not that it's somebody that's right in your face. That means that Hashem is sending it to you to see what will you do. Rabbi Aaron Atta says, if a Jew looks away, looks away, does not look at the Himalayas woman, looks away, does not end up bringing all those disgusting thoughts in his mind, at that moment that he's looking away and letting all of this garbage pass him, letting this woman that is acting like a cow because she has the same outfit on, walk past him, and he continues, at that moment, that moment, not later, not before, at that very moment, he could pray to Hashem and ask Hashem for anything he wants. And it'll be forgiven. It'll be given. Anything he wants. Why? Because the test is that big. You have something difficult, you want to get a job, you want to find a wife, you want to have a kid, you want to have refuah shlema, anything you want. Hashem says, you can do it. How? Overcome the obstacle. But not just once, overcome it and then just look back just to see what happened. That's not overcoming the test. That's making a joke of the test. You press X on the website, so you go to another website. <laughs> that's, not, that's not passing the test. Passing the test is staying clean. Now, the only way that a person can overcome such tests is if he knows, number one, that Hashem is the one that's giving it to you. Number two, Hashem knows what He is doing. If He gave you a test, that means He knows for sure, without a shadow of a doubt, that you can pass it. There's no doubt in His mind that you can pass this test. No father will tell his little two, three-year-old son to lift a uh, tractor trailer on top of his head. Why? Because He knows He can't do it. If He told His two-year-old son to lift a uh, 18-wheeler over his head, what does that mean? It means the father is crazy and hates his kid. Needless to say, this is not Hashem, our Father in Heaven. If He gave you a test, if He tells you, go pick up something, that means He knows for sure you can do it. So don't ever say, oh, this test is too much, Hashem is giving me too much. No such thing. No such thing. If Hashem gave you a test, that means He knows you can pass it. So how do we pass all of these tests? It requires us to have bitachon, confidence, not only that Hashem is running the world, but that Hashem actually is the one that's giving it to us for our own benefit. That His whole system that has ups and downs for us, that has difficulties, that has reward, that has enjoyment, that has things that are not so enjoyable, at the end of it all, it has good. And that's what the Bitachon series is all about. So on, on page number 9, the Beta Levi, on the bottom of the page, says the following. He says, Hashem decrees the results and then He chooses one of the many possible ways for it to happen. The way this simply works is as follows. We've talked about free choice several times over the last couple of weeks. It's a very interesting question. If Hashem knows what I'm going to do, then do I still really have free choice? 
The answer is yes, you have free choice. And even though he knows what you're going to do, he does not disturb your choice. So even if I knew what you're going to do in, let's say, a half hour from now, an hour from now, and you end up doing it, that doesn't mean that I interrupted your choice. You still did it. Hashem knows what we're going to do our whole life. And He does not interrupt with our choice, does not interfere with our choice. But nonetheless, He makes the world function in such a way based on our free choice. Which means that He already decides what outcome will happen out of every single thing that a person will choose. If he chooses, let's say, to go the right way, he will get married to a good woman, have good kids, have good panasa, never have to worry about money, have a, uh, you know, kids that actually respect him, have a wife that stays married to him more than just a few years, have a life full of happiness, be healthy throughout his life, not have to suffer, all types of things. If he chooses bad, then the opposite. 